So in this platform, I want us to consider our question, which is on angular motion from the question paper, April 2024, that we had. So that is angular motion, question number two, 2.1 you're given, uh, the first part of our question. Let us uh, see, uh, take the information you're given, the wheel of belt drive rotates. Remember those belt drive that you worked with uh, from your entry. So they were given that a wheel, it is rotating at uh, 1,500 revolutions per minute. That is revs per minute. We are given a speed of 1,500. That is revs uh, per minute. Okay. Then the belt is subjected to an effective force. So we are given uh, the effective force of 800 uh, newton. If the power transmitted by the belt is, we are given the power that is transmitted by the belt being uh, 15 uh, kilowatt, calculate the diameter of the wheel. So we need the diameter of the wheel in this case. What is going to be uh, the diameter? So let us consider what we have and with our information, try to manipulate our formulas into uh, what we need to answer in this case. Remember that the power actually can be obtained from the effective force times the velocity, which is the linear velocity. And this linear velocity, we do understand that uh, since we are given this speed in uh, revs per minute, there is something that we can obtain in rad per second. So we do understand that linear velocity is simply the radius times the angular velocity. Remember, anything that is from the angular, when you multiply it by the radius, it gives us the linear. So there's a relationship there of this V and this is simply what? Diameter over two. So there we simply have the diameter over two times our omega. Remember radius, guys, diameter over two. As we need to calculate what? The diameter. So you can write it in terms of the diameter, just like that. So the velocity is diameter over two. Okay, let's see. From the omega that we have, because we do not have this, remember that omega can be calculated when given the speed in revolutions per minute, that is 2 pi n over 60. It was supposed to be 2 pi n, where this n is in revs per second. So if you are given revs per minute, you divide by 60. This is revs per minute, so you have to divide by, by 60. So guys, let's conclude about this V. It's going to be d over 2 times our omega. So this is our radius times our omega in this case, which is 2 pi n over 60. So as we can see, we have got the formula that we can use to calculate the diameter with or having everything that you're given consisting of the n in revs per minute. So we're just going to have this formula as the effective force times our velocity, which is this part. Remember, it's radius, which is diameter over 2 times 2 pi n over 60. So learn also to manipulate formulas in exam so that you can answer a particular section that you are given. So they're just going to substitute whatever that you're given. The power 15 kilowatt, that is 15,000, is equal to the effective force, which is 800 times the diameter over 2, which is representing our radius, times the omega, which is 2 pi n, that is 2 pi times n, 1,500 over what? Over 60. So with this, we can calculate our D, which is the diameter, the one that we are asked to calculate. This is the same as over one. So you can just cross multiply. That is 15,000 times. Going to multiply by two and by this 60 in the denominator. So times two times 60. Then after cross multiplying, definitely you remain with 800, two pi, times 1,500, so divide by that. So you're going to divide by 800 times 2 pi times 1,500. That means you are simply going to remain with the D, which is the diameter in that case, and that was going to be 0, 0,239 in meters. All right, to three decimal places. So that is what you can uh, use, or you can use any other way, guys, as long you do understand how are you manipulating your formulas in the process that is... Uh, what we could have uh, simplified this question. Let's see the other part. On the other part, we are given the earth is a diameter of uh, 12,742. So we are given 
the diameter of the Earth, which is uh, 12,742 kilometers. So remember, the Earth, we are simply talking of a secular object. So that is a secular, meaning to say we also have the displacement, which is the angular displacement of the Earth, which is 2 pi. That's a circle, a complete circle. It has taken at 360 degrees, a complete revolution. That's, that's, that's the Earth, just like a round circle. So that is 2 pi radians, which is the angular displacement. Also, uh, what we need to know is that this is the diameter that you need in kilometers. So on the calculations, it's going to be radius. Let's just leave, leave it like that. Uh, okay, 2.21. The question was to calculate the following, the angular velocity of the tree that is on the equator. All right, so if we are talking about the equator, remember the equator that is the halfway that we are talking about, that is the midway that we are seeing on our Earth. So this is going to be given as this, guys. This is angular velocity, where angular velocity is supposed to be angular displacement over time. Angular displacement over time. So you have got the angular displacement, which is 2 pi, like I explained. This is the Earth, a circular. Uh, it's going to be the complete circle, 2 pi radians, 360 degrees. But what about the time? It is considered in an hourly uh, manner. So you're going to consider 24 hours. All right? If you consider this, you consider it in 24 hours as your time frame a day in 24 hours. So meaning to say our time is going to be considered in 24-hour manner, which is 24 hours. And we do know that in an hour, we have got 3,600 seconds. So you must consider that the equator and Earth, when considering anything calculation uh, that you'll be given, you consider in a 24-hourly Manner. So meaning to say our omega was going to be theta, which is 2 pi over the time. So this is supposed to be angular velocity, which is measured in rad per second per second. This is already in radians. So the time is supposed to be in seconds so that we obtain rad per second. So the time in seconds, remember, we've got 24 hours and each hour has got 3,600 seconds. So you simply multiply two. 3,600 seconds that was going to give us uh, the omega that we want, which is the angular velocity. And that was going to be 0, 0,000727, which is in rad per, rad per second. All right. Then the angular displacement after 3,600 seconds, which is an hour after one hour. So it's just a continued, like, like guys, what we had here, remember we said, uh, that's 2.22. Omega is theta over time. So just make theta the subject because that is what you want here. Angular displacement, theta. You have the omega already. So just going to make omega, I mean, theta the subject, which is our angular displacement. So theta is equal to omega times time, just like that, which is your angular velocity. Uh, that is 0, 0,000727 times the time that we are given within an hour, which is 3,600, that's what, what you're given there, 3,600, that's our time. So we are going to multiply by 3,600. That is going to give us uh, the theta in radians, and that was going to be 0, 0,6, uh, 0, 0,262 in radians. Remember, theta is measured in radians, angular displacement, okay? Then they need us to calculate the circumferential velocity the linear in what meters per second in meters per second remember i talked about this relationship previously when we were talking about the the displacement uh part that we had uh i think it was supposed to be on another part there is a, but i think i had that part let me just explain it even here whatever that you have that is to be taken from the angular motion if you talk of the angular displacement angular velocity back to the linear, which is to circumferential, whether it's velocity, whether it's displacement, which is di distance, you multiply by the radius. So S, which is in a linear, is equal to the radius times theta displacement in what? Angular motion. Velocity in linear is radius times omega angular velocity, linear velocity. Acceleration radius times angular acceleration. So anything that is 
angular, angular, angular that you have, if you multiply it by the radius, it gives you the same name but under linear. It's no longer angular acceleration. It's now linear acceleration. It's no longer angular velocity. It's now linear velocity or circumferential velocity in meters per second. So you must know this is measured in meters per second, meters per square second, in meters. This is measured in radians. This is in rad per second. This is in rad per square second. Know your units also. So as we want a conversion of this to the linear velocity, to the circumferential velocity, that is the linear one. All right. So there we've got the formula to apply. That is 2.23. So V is equal to the radius times omega of which omega we have. And the radius Remember, that is diameter over 2. So why am I talking about this? Because they were given the diameter. So that is diameter over 2. So you can simply write this formula as diameter over 2 times omega. All right. So that's diameter over 2 times omega, which is representing the radius in meters, this diameter. So kilo simply means 1,000. So you're going to multiply by 10 to the exponent of 3. All right. So that was going to be 12,742. 1,000 times 10 to the exponent of 3 over 2. We have got the radius now times the omega, which is the angular velocity, so that it tends to the linear velocity. Remember your angular velocity, you calculated it before. So you're just going to substitute 0, 0,000727. So that was going to give us the linear velocity or the, tangent, uh, the tangential velocity or the circumferential velocity. Uh, that was going to be 463,172 in meters per second. In meters per second. Angular rad per second. So know your units just like that. I think if you watch the video on the angular motion, that introduction can help you to work out as many questions as you can under this type of uh, approach, like when dealing with these typical questions. So that's what you had on angular motion. Uh, from Medzone African Motives till we meet again.